This question, again, like the, the slipping ladder, uh, it's a classic question. That's why I've given it a title, the shifting shadow. And it's really important. And again, it's a bit counterintuitive. So that's why we should really think carefully about it. Okay, it's kind of like a, a seminal example. So here is a, uh, a person lit by a street light at night. And they are going to, in a second, we're going to draw them walking away from the street light. Okay, they're walking in this direction. Okay. And the question that's going to be asked is all about, as the name suggests, the shadow that's cast by the person from the street light. Okay? So before I actually explain what the question is, let's get a bit of a better sense of what's happening. Okay? This street light here, um, let's do an extra construction to indicate that in our particular example, um, this street light is six meters suspended off the ground vertically. Okay? So this is a right angle here. Okay? Uh, for the sake of simplicity, let's call this person uh, two meters tall, which you might say, say, you know, that sounds ridiculous, but LeBron James is actually 2.03 meters tall. So there you go. To one, des to one significant figure, we have a two meter tall person. Okay. Now, where will their shadow be if this is where they are standing in relation to the street light? Which side of it will the, the shadow be on? It'll be on the right hand side, right? It's this part over here that the light doesn't quite reach. Okay, so if you drew a line from the street light to the top of LeBron's head, okay, and kept it going along the end here, right, this spot here, here is the shadow, right? So in fact, I'm gonna label that shadow, okay? And then we've got a, a right angle triangle that sort of forms around this. Okay, now before we actually write it down, I'm just going to state to you what's going on. Okay, there are two questions we're going to ask of this. Number one, how fast is, here's the tip of the shadow, right? Here's the edge. How fast is the tip of the shadow moving as this person walks? I'm going to tell you their speed in a second. How fast is that moving? And secondly, how fast is the shadow growing? Let me say that again. How fast is a shadow growing? Because you can imagine if we re rewind the clock, right, and have LeBron standing right underneath the lamp, then he doesn't have a shadow, really. It's right beneath him, okay? It's not long like this, okay? But the second he starts moving, the shadow begins to form, and the further he is away, the longer the shadow will be, yeah? This is just like at sunset, your shadow is really long at sunset because you have a really long triangle being formed between you and the, the sun and where your shadow ends. Does that make sense? Okay, let's put one more piece of information on here, which is that LeBron is walking at a very casual one meter per second. Okay, so we've got a rate, we've got a situation. Okay, now this time I'll write it down for you and I want you to again think about it. I'm going to give you a bit of thinking time. Part A is how fast is the tip of the shadow? There it is, I'm even going to label it for you. Part A is, how fast is the tip of the shadow moving? Okay, so I guess we could say, what is the tip's speed? It's going that way, how fast? Part B is, the shadow itself is getting longer and longer and longer. Okay, so at what speed is the shadow growing? How fast is that tip moving? How fast is the shadow getting longer and longer and longer? I want to remind you of those three strategies I gave you this morning. We talked about identifying constants and variables. We talked about writing you know, relevant equations, usually geometric ones, measurement ones. And then thirdly, do you remember what was the third one? The most important one, where most of the work is. You're probably going to have to find some derivatives of some kind, right? Now, I haven't given you any variables of any kind in here. Again, that's part of the question. I'm going to give you a few minutes to have a play. Um, muck about, see where you can go. Draw a new diagram if you have to. And um, if you think you have an idea or you want some nudges in the right direction, call me over. Okay, off you go. All right, so it looks like you guys need a bit of a hand, which is totally fine. Okay, so you have to flounder around a little bit. Um, <laughs> you have to stay in the pit a little while before, before I show it to you. Otherwise, you're just like, oh, it's just easy. It is not easy, but let me hold your hand through this. Okay. Now, I've started to hear everyone knows, okay, we're going to have to put some pronumerals in here because the first thing is you've got to identify some constants or some 
variables, okay? Now you can call anything you like here, anything you like. You really can, okay? But I'm gonna make some arguments for particular things and I'm gonna try and convince you as to why, okay? Here's the first thing I'm gonna put in here. See this length between the lamp, the street light, where its position is on the ground, as compared to our person, LeBron, whoever it is, okay? I'm going to call that x. Now you don't have to call it x, you can call it anything you like. You may have used x, but you might have used it for something different. Here's my reason for why I'm calling that x, okay? The most important constant in this question, in fact, it's the only one I've bothered to highlight with a different color apart from this, um, is the rate of change. The rate of change is central to what's going on, right? I mean, we're in the topic rates of change, yeah? So I want to be able to state this in a nice, simple way. If the person is moving away from the lamp, then that means that x is getting bigger at that rate. Does that make sense? So therefore, the derivative that goes with that is the change in x as compared to the change in time, right? It's a rate, so dx on dt. And I can just say really nice and simply, that's equal to 1. Are you happy with that idea? Yeah? Okay, now, once I've got this in place, great, I've got a constant. I can now start to sort out what about all these variables here, okay? Now, we all know because it's part of the core of the question, right? That the shadow is getting longer, okay? Um, shadow, I'm going to call it S for shadow, okay? So that's this length here and it's a variable. So in fact, the growth of the shadow is really D, it's the change in S as compared to time. That's what I'm after. 